Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be grocery plant shopping at Kroger's Marketplace in Frisco, Texas. I wanted to say thank you so much to everybody that continues to tune in on the live chat premieres. Yesterday, we were able to hit above 8,000 subscribers, so the plant foldies community um, at Grow Folds is continuing to grow, and I really appreciate it. So we are gonna be going to this um, Kroger. I was actually here last Tuesday filming and I heard that they got a restock. So I'm gonna definitely check it out and see what kind of plants they have. And as you guys know, whenever I grow grocery star, grocery store plant shopping, excuse me, um, there's always going to be a lot of floral plants some a lot of blooming plants. So like this plant right here is a Kalanchoe and this tin is for $9.99. So with Kalanchoe, if you guys haven't already know, it is a flowering plant, but it's actually um, more of a succulent plant. I didn't really realize that until recently. So I thought that was really cool. I know at the last um, plant nursery tour I did at Callaway's, there were tons of flowering plants. And as you can see, that is a cyclamen, um, another cyclamen right here. And I've mentioned that with cyclamen, like, they're really beautiful looking plants. I actually like the foliage more so than the blooms, but having a bunch of cyclamen um, featured at that one plant nursery tour I did at Callaway's Nursery, a local um, nursery store in Dallas, Texas, I um, have a new fond appreciation for flowering plants. And as you can see, spring is almost here and we already have some tulips, but you can see this one. Look at how the Kalanchoe have fully bloomed. So you saw the earlier ones in this video and those were still in bud, but this one is when it fully blooms. Absolutely stunning. And what I heard is once they're done with the blooms, you just cut the blooms back and it would rebloom again. So that's really cool. I don't know too much about Kalanchoe, but nonetheless, I did want to feature that plant um, for you guys. And as you can see, we have some hyacinths right over here. And um, hyacinths are very fragrant um, bulb plants that have these beautiful blooms. Now, whenever I think of hyacinths, I think of Animal Crossing New Horizons. I play that on my Nintendo, my Nintendo Switch, and it's really cool to um, be able to grow hyacinths in real life. I've never seen hyacinths in real life until this year, actually, after I started going grocery plant shopping, and I realized that um, hyacinths are actually readily available. So I thought that was really cool. I really like the different colors they have they come in purple pinks white um, yellow i think it's really awesome and then right over here we have some large spathophyllum or peace lilies these are for $19.99 and i would say with grocery plants um, they actually are more cost effective than even big box store plants like maybe walmart home depot or lowe's you'd be surprised to find um grocery store plants to be more cost effective like look at this large planter right here this is for $19.99 and um this bathophyllum plant care is right over here um, there's not really details about that, but the thing about Spathophyllum or Peace Lily is they can um, tolerate lower light conditions. They definitely like to be on the wetter side, so definitely make sure you water your Spathophyllum because if it um, dries and they don't get enough water, it will just like fall over and, and look like it's dead, but actually it's just a very dramatic plant. They're kind of similar to Calathea, um, just very dramatic in a sense that they will let you know when they are extremely thirsty. And then wait, right over here, we have some pastel looking tulips i love tulips because they honestly signify the approach of spring and spring in general um i love yellow tulips they're so beautiful but we also um, have some of these um, lavenders and pinks and whites very pastel looking colors i'm not really a big fan about pastel colors but i do appreciate tulips um they're a very beautiful plant um, I um, should have planted my tulip bulbs a little bit earlier when it was super cold and there was actually a cold snap out in North Dallas. But, you know, you know, to each his own in terms of just when you could possibly plant um, tulip bulbs. I think I can still get away with putting tulip bulbs down. I might just put them in a freezer to actually stratify them or have them crack and then plant them in the ground because I have some pretty cool deep purple um, tulips. And then right over here, we have these orchids. Now, I'm not necessarily a fan of these orchid colors just because these orchids were actually um, dyed, meaning they put food coloring in, and that's why you had like the super blue colors. What they did is like they take these Philanopsis orchids and white orchids and then put 
put food coloring to get those really um you know just like blue colors there's not really any blue um, plants out there and like blue flowers are very rare I do want to zoom in over here. So whenever you go grocery plant shopping, there's always going to be Philanopsis orchids. That's probably the most readily available orchid at grocery stores. And um, Kroger's, which is you know a local grocery store out in DFW or the North Dallas market, um, they always feature Philanopsis orchids. And I love these Matsui cascading orchids just because they do cascade. They remind me of like weeping cherry blossoms or just weeping um, trees in general. I love that windswept cascading look about the um, Philanopsis orchids. And they are for $29.99. That is not bad at all. And the thing about these orchid blooms is they can last up to two to three months just depending on the care. Now the care tips for Philanopsis orchids by Plant Foldies is they do like bright indirect light. Um, water maybe once a week make sure that you completely um, soak the roots but then let it completely dry out before you do another watering they do not like to be over watered sometimes actually under watering philanopsis orchids or orchids in general is better um, you'll know that the philanopsis orchid is actually thirsty because you can look at the roots they will be a very gray silver color but once they get wet they'll be green so just keep an eye out on that that's um the one thing about Philanopsis orchids is, or just orchids in general, they are susceptible to root rot. Um, in the wild, they're epiphytes, so they actually attach to like trees. And so they have a lot more like aerial roots and their roots actually just attach to like tree bark. And that's why most orchids are grown in, um, you know, bark medium so i do want to show you this this these are plants by mason farms um it is a um, plant nursery out of new mexico and i think this is really cool just because they have some pretty cool looking plants just you know typical tropical house plants like this one right here we can't miss a video where i don't feature a hedra helix guys hedra helix or english ivy um, I haven't been gaslighting it as of late just because I do have a hedra helix growing in my home and it has yet to get spider mites and I'm going on I think week one and a half or two so I'm super excited this one is in a four and a um, half inch planter for $9.99 um, this looks like that hedra helix I typically see at Home Depot um, it's a really nice looking green ivy and then right over here is a petra croton or croton petra I know some people either love croton or hate them there's not really a middle ground i'm actually loving crotons just because they really have some cool foliage and the colors are, are are really neat now with crotons the variegation or the coloration of crotons are really based on the lighting conditions they love bright indirect light or full sun they can handle that this one is a peperomia rousseau really beautiful looking peperomia these are all for 9.99 and what i love about it is the red under um you know undersides of the leaves um it has a very red tone to it in rousseau means red so i think that's awesome um what else do we have we have a daifin baki of some sort for 9.99 by mason farms not 100% sure what this Diphenbachia is, but I do love the variegation. The thing with Diphenbachia is they do require bright indirect light. They're a little bit more difficult of a plant to grow. Um, if you compare them to like maybe Aglonema, they both have similar growth patterns. The only thing is um, Diphenbachia get very leggy if you don't give it um, that bright indirect light. So make sure you have some high lighting, con you know, lighting conditions if you're going to put a Diphenbachia. But nonetheless, the foliage is absolutely stunning. I'm going to go ahead and put these plants aside and you can see there is another Philanopsis orchid here, another Hedra Helix guys, I'm um, right over there and we're going to pan over here and look at some of these plants. Um, the thing about grocery store plants is they have these like quirky little decorations. Um, I'm not really a fan, but if you find this though, this is one of our favorite um, Dracaenas. This one is for $19.99. This is a Dracaena Hurricane or Dracaena Tornado. See how the um, the foliage actually twists like a tornado or a hurricane. Um, I know my plant foldies and those are basically what I call... Um, 
my viewers are, are the plant foldies they um, have mentioned in the comments that that's one of their favorite dracaenas what i've told them, uh, my viewers is dracaenas are so underrated in terms of just plants in the house and i really think they need a little bit more love now here is a costa farms plant so it's really interesting that costa farms also um, sources to grocery stores this one is for 6.99 this one is also um an epipremnum arium neon pothos absolutely love it you know epipremnum arium neon pothos has some really nice bright um coloration to it i love the yellow neon green color and this is by costa farms exotic angels and the planter is okay for me i do like the color i just don't like the etching and then right here is a lemon button fern um really nice one by mason farbs this one is i believe $13.99 or something like that really really nice looking foliage um, plant I love the circular like textures of the leaves for this fern not 100% sure about the care tips yeah this is for $13.99 and it's in a five inch planter um, so anybody in the comments or even in the live chats please let me know if you have some care tips for um, that fern and this one is a, re a really nice looking um, epipremnum arium golden pothos this one's for $9.99 by mason farms I actually like this golden pothos just because if you look at the variegation, it's actually higher variegated. You would actually think that this was a Hawaiian pothos, but this is being called a golden pothos. Now with golden pothos, they do revert back to more of this jade pothos if you don't give it bright indirect, indirect light. So definitely make sure that with your pothos to get that best um, variegation, definitely give them a lot of bright indirect light and they should be good to go. That one is the jade form and I don't mind the green form as well it's really pretty but if you put them side by side you can see the stark differences between the golden pothos so um what else do we got we got some more neon pothos right over here by costa farms uh, we have a black rabbit foot fern this one is for 6.99 and i've been seeing a lot of these in hanging basket form and you can see that the leaves are super delicate just like any fur fern and then there's the um those like like fuzzy rabbit foot looking things um on the tops of the soils i believe that might be its roots not a hundred percent sure i think it's really cute some people find it kind of creepy because they look like tarantula um legs but yeah and then this one right here is a pachira aquatica and this one's reduced to 840 so it's a reduced or clearance price at kroger so that's another thing about kroger is i need to go um, frequent it a little bit more because they do clearance out plants and i remember seeing that aglonema um star king that red one for like 24.99 um actually clearanced out to like seven dollars so like i want to make sure that i find that because that's one of the aglonema i want to add it looks like an aglonema like red king but we'll see speaking of aglonemas i pulled this one this was aglonema mary ann to me this is actually an aglonema maria so i'm not sure if they're the same plant and mason farms just decided to call it a different um you know aglonema name um here is some more rex begonia this peperomia right here is um really cool this is a peperonia um raisin or um raisinette raisinette yeah this is a peperomia raisinette for $13.99 look at this they look like raisins do they not look like raisins like this is a really cool peperomia um i would actually add this to my collection so i've been really into dark foliage leaves almost like black leaves or purple leaves the only thing about this um plant is for me especially these type of peperomia they're a little bit more challenging because if you overwater them they will um they will just like rot away or if you underwater them they're very susceptible to spider mites so there's like not a really a middle ground to make them a little bit more challenging this one is a begonia rex for $13.99 so while I was at this other nursery called Nicholson Hardy which will be featured later um, in the second part of this video I ended up getting three begonia rex those are my three first begonias in my collection I've grown begonia before in the past and what I love about begonia especially begonia rex is that their leaves have such a metallic sheen about them and they come in so many colors and forms I actually prefer the darker reds grays and even black blacks uh um black um rex begonia so i think that's really cool and then right over here we have a bromeliad 
um, that's really nice I do like the um, spray painted looking pink foliage and then we have right over here a philodendron birkin by mason farms this one is actually fairly decent um variegated i've been seeing some super cool variegated um philodendron birkin where like they have very electrifying white variegation very common or easy to find philodendron for sure and this one is in a six inch planter for um 19.99 so it's a little bit pricey and then here we have another kalanchoe right here this one's reduced to 230 so that's not bad i actually would consider buying that um, plant today for that price that's a, a really good price for a kalanchoe and then we have a zebra plant right over here um we've got some lucky bamboo but guys do you see this I just panned over. I didn't even expect this. Like, I really didn't expect this. For $29.99, look at that. Another jackpot plant find. Um, these are either philodendron pink princess or philodendron marble, depending on the variegation. So we'll take a look. But look at this. Now, for $30, this is a little bit pricey, considering we saw a bunch of philodendron pink princess at Walmart, and they had some amazing variegation. But nonetheless, look at these plants, and this is by Tropic, um, what is it? Tropic, um, yeah, Tropic Collection, and this one is called Pink Marble Philodendron. So this is a marble um, pink philodendron so um i would say maybe it's because of the pink variegation it looks like there is some beautiful pink variegation available and there's some more pink variegation right here these are actually highly variegated um marble looking um philodendron pink princess so this might be like that philodendron marble pink princess um i like it but then you can see that there are their variegation I like this one has got some really good variegation so the thing about philodendron pink princess or philodendron urubescence pink princess is um the variegation is actually influenced by the original genetics of the plant like you can see this one is supposedly a philodendron um marble but where is the marbling where's the variegation the only marbling i see is actually on the planter look at that uh, marbling i do like that um texture and the pink on it but this one looks like a reverted philodendron pink princess so i'm gonna just show you this these are supposedly philodendron marble um this one and this one like if you had to choose between the two which philodendron would you buy um i'm pretty sure we already know what what the majority of everybody would say but hey you might actually enjoy more like simple reverted looking philodendron pink princess so you know, I'm not going to judge, but I can't believe that this Kroger actually has philodendron pink princess um, and the ones that are claiming to be philodendron marble. Um, that's really cool because there are some really nice looking um, philodendron marble here. Like this one has some amazing um, variegation. It looks like all of these are variegated. It's got sectoral variegation. It's got splashy variegation. And even the, um, the planter it's in is really nice. Look at that. That's absolutely stunning. Um, and then we have somewhere on the left, did you see that sectoral variegation, that really bright pink? And then these ones right over here have some minimal uh, variegation. So here's the thing about Philodendron Pink Princess. Um, if you buy one that doesn't have a lot of variegation and think that you can flood it with some um, grow lights to get the pink, that's not necessarily the case. Um, I've learned, especially after doing research and even t um, listening to other plant YouTubers, that the philodendron pink princess is really based on its original genetics. And I think this one actually has the best genetics. It's got a lot of variegation on each leaf and it looks to be growing still. So like, I don't know, like look at how beautiful that leaf is. It's just like a work of art. It looks like somebody was painting on a canvas and it's got different textures of pink. Um, I really like that. And th but this one is being called the philodendron marble. So um, not 100% sure if this is like tissue cultured or just a regular um, propagated one. I'm going to assume that these are tissue cultured just because we've been seeing a lot of tissue cultured plants. I mean, how would you uh, mass produce this if you didn't do tissue culture? This is a highly likelihood that these are tissue cultured philodendron pink princess or what they would call philodendron marble um, for $29.99 at Kroger. So if you are in the DFW area, a local Dallas 
um, person or you live in Frisco or McKinney, go to the Kroger out in um, on Custer Road right across the street from HEB and you'll see. Um, I saw this last time and part of me feels like I should get this because of the variegation. Like look at how bright white this um, philodendron birkin is. This is for $19.99 and then this one right here we have a Peperomia Russo. Um, but like I was saying, going back to the philodendron um, birkin, that is extremely variegated and that's lovely. Um, we have some live trend plants here. We've I've featured this before. These miniature um, plants or just small juvenile plants. Um, they're originally $14.99, but they're um, on sale for $7.99. So we're gonna pan over here and wait. Do I? <gasps> oh my gosh! Are you freaking kidding me? Costa Farms trending tropicals in. Wow, Costa Farms trending tropicals in Kroger. And look at the price. Do you see that? That is $16.99. $16.99. Okay, I'm sorry if I'm getting super excited, but for $16.99, you can get trending tropical plants at Kroger. Um, this is a geo plant. I can't really pronounce the actual like Latin name, but we can see there are um, Aglonema and Baltic Blue um, trending tropical. So that's amazing. So typically when you think of like big box stores, you would think that like Walmart has the cheapest trending tropicals. I know they have them for $19.98, but I'm sorry. I'm definitely going to go get my, you know, trending tropicals at Kroger. And luckily I don't live too far from this area you know for so for me to just take a little drive down to this kroger because if this kroger is going to be carrying trending tropicals who knows what kind of trending tropicals i'll find and for some reason 16.99 you've got to be kidding me it's cheaper than walmart it's cheaper than lowe's and it's cheaper than home home depot so like kroger's is going to be my new set to go for costa farms trending tropicals i am shook I am surprised. Plant foldies. Let me know in the comments what you think. Like that is a beautiful um, aglonema um, golden papaya. And then right over here is an um, a epipranum panatum Baltic blue. Now Baltic blue is a you know a panatum or what you would call even a pothos. I've been looking at these and actually considering getting them, but now that they are at um, Kroger for $16.99, I might end up getting one of these Baltic blues finally. Like I might end up getting it like today well maybe not today but i'm thinking about possibly getting it soon and i'm gonna be checking this kroger like weekly so guys be prepared for me to kind of feature the same products or the same plants um but i'm gonna be visiting this quite often to like the same thing with heb but look at how nice lush and full these aglonema are they look super healthy i always love seeing like um restock so maybe they just restock these plants today i know that this um, particular kroger really takes care of its plants actually most kroger stores do so we're gonna see but um i know that if they clearance out plants and these plants don't um sell maybe i'll be able to land that like i actually want to buy this geo plant but i know nothing about the plant care of this geo plant what i love though is it looks like plastic just the texture of the leaves and everything like it's really awesome not a hundred percent sure like what the plant carries so i'll have to do research before i bring that into my space but that is the plant find of the day not only am i finding philodendron um pink princess marble for 19.99 at a grocery store now i've realized that um kroger carries um trending tropicals by costa farms yeah that's gonna definitely be we're gonna have to see some more um you know we're gonna go see some more you know grocery store plant shopping especially kroger kroger is now on my list of um, places to visit on a regular basis but i did want to pan over here these plants are absolutely beautiful i will say grocery store plants are typically healthier looking than big box plants um stores just because like even look at this like this fern right here and this one is for 6.99 they have very cost effective prices but um grocery store plants um you will you will see that there is a floral department meaning that the floral department takes care of all the flowers and the bouquets and they are in charge of watering and making sure that they take care of any like dead leaves and whatnot i witnessed that when i went to whole foods so it's really awesome to see that um we have people that care we have um staff at grocery stores that care about the plants they're not just letting them sit there and die 
and it looks like you know these plants were brought in in a pallet but they're not being left outside in the cold so not to sound negative i'm not trying to gaslight big box stores i'm just stating observations i've seen since i've been visiting grocery stores big box stores almost every single day so i can get content for our plant foldies in this community um this is another philodendron um heteraceum brazil i love the tin i don't really like the little like decoration like this valentine's um like heart but that is a nice looking philodendron heteraceum brazil i'm not sure exactly how much the price is because they didn't have it underneath the tin but nonetheless it's a beautiful plant i actually thought it was a hanging basket and then speaking of hanging baskets we have um a live trends um hanging basket this one's for 29.99 now um the planter looks nice i wish it was just a sim uh, simple like texture like a smooth matte gray but look at how beautiful this epipremium arium neon pothos is and if you guys missed the live premiere i showed a d local dallas nursery um store called plant keeper incorporated you will see mature um neon pothos growing up a totem and you'll see that these leaves like any pothos or epipremium arium if you grow them up a pole will start to large and size up and even potentially fenestrate and look like a monster a variegated monster like i kid you not but um that one right over there was just a golden pothos i like that philodendron birkin like i might actually go back and buy it i just feel like 19.99 is a little bit pricey but nonetheless we'll we'll see but i mean guys i am just super excited that i was able to find this it looks like they just restocked um philodendron uh, marble so let me know in the comments if you would buy this for $29.99 what do you think about grocery um, stores actually carrying some pretty cool rare aeroids and just the health of grocery store plants do you think that they're better than big box stores um, I am going to pan out over here just because I do love the plants I'm just happy that you know I have all of these plant um, air you know stores that i can actually buy plants for them and look at that this is really pretty and most people would oversee these um plants just because you know you go to a grocery store and your primary role is to do your grocery shopping not necessarily to shop for plants but my plant foldies my viewers definitely check out your grocery stores let me know in the comments in the live chat if you find any cool plants but I'm going to zoom in there. Yeah, Costa Farms did great by sourcing out more trending tropicals at grocery stores. And I just really think that's awesome. I probably should have picked up that Geo plant for $16.99, but we'll see. Now, the next location, guys, is Nicholson Hardy. I have featured Nicholson Hardy before. It is my second favorite or one of my top three favorite plant nurseries in the Dallas-Fort Worth area it is off of lovers lane in dallas texas this features a lot of beautiful plants but it also has a lot of interior plants outdoor plants it's just an awesome plant um, shop or just shop in general so we're just going to walk over here and look at all of these decorations um and i did see this on their instagram feed look at these cool koi ceramic um decorations i love koi if another thing that you guys may not know is aside from origami I love Japanese uh, maples, koi, and very fancy goldfish. I actually had a 100-gallon um, aquarium with a bunch of fancy goldfish. I've even imported some from Japan. So, you know, like I'm indoor, you know, importing Indonesian plants. I've also imported live goldfish from Japan. So I thought that was really cool. Those are really cute little um, koi ceramics. And we have some more, you know, planters right over here. Some of those um, Asian, like Chinese uh, ceramic planters to put these plants in. And I do love the um, the koi ceramic um, figurines. We're going to walk over here and look at the ZZ um, plant. It's a large one. We have a ficus elastica burgundy right over here. We've got a ficus um, lyrata over there. And the thing about Nicholson Hardy is Nicholson Hardy has amazing lighting, amazing flowering plants. And when I say flowering plants, flowering supposedly indoor plants. Look at these Riger begonia. I've been featuring those Riger begonia a lot in all of my plant videos. Um, you know, when I go big box plant shopping or especially at the grocery stores, they have a lot of Riger begonia and we can see that there's more flowering plants and a bunch of hoyas in hanging baskets we've got some anthuriums there we've got some green marantha right over there um nicholson hardy and especially me like visiting it um 
noontime, there's a lot of bright light. And this is what I've been talking about. So I've been talking about indoor azalea, quote, indoor azalea. Look at how beautiful the blooms are. I love azaleas. I've always wanted to have like a really cool bonsai azalea. It's just that with azalea, or at least in the summertime in Texas, it's very rough on the um, azalea. And the thing is, azalea don't necessarily want to like um, dry out complete in terms of the soil. You want to keep it moist. This one's for $16.99. So they actually have different types of indoor azalea. There's a specific cultivar. So I do, I'm going to do research research and actually make sure to put that in the plant ID and apparently they can grow indoors and they are reblooming so that's like super cool and I just like it I love white azaleas I think these azaleas actually would make great um, pre bonsai because it's already um, compact um, and you can actually put it in a bonsai planters like if i'm gonna buy and actually i am gonna eventually buy it indoor azalea i'm gonna definitely put the uh repot it in a um medium acidic medium because um azaleas like acidic soil and it's gonna be kanuma and it's um, fast draining because azalea also don't like to sit in water so they like to stay moist but they also like um to have fast draining soil and then we've been looking at kalanchoe like kalanchoe is the flower of the hour kalanchoe um, kalanchoe are more succulent like so for my plant folies and viewers i found that very interesting and then we have some hydrangea, some pink hydrangea over here. So the hydrangeas are showing up. And look at this. So the thing about Nicholson Hardy is this is all natural lighting. So they have actually a sunroof. And as you guys can see, they've got some beautiful um, hydrangeas and aglonema. And look at that. Look at that. This is just awesome. Like, I honestly wish my home can have natural, like, sunroof. Like, maybe even in my um, my master bedroom just to have, like, a sunroof. That would be super cool. But look at these. Aglonema right over here. These are Aglonema snow, or I'm going to think it's Aglonema snow. These are for $29.99, but look at how bright that Aglonema is. Like, that's absolutely stunning. They're um, Aglonema snow and... I believe if you actually give these aglonema even more bright and direct light, they can get wider and wider, but it's so gorgeous. And the thing about Nicholson Hardy, this plant shop um, or just this shop in general is they know how to um, plant style their, their plants, how to present their plants. This is what you call bougie plant styling and I'm living for it. Like I don't mind it at all. Um, this is what a for real plant nursery should look like. So obviously this is a little bit more on the upscale. Um, the plant prices, I would honestly say are a little bit more on the pricey side, but if you just wanna go over here and window shop and look at plants, um, that's not a um, bad thing to do as well, just because of the ambiance. Um, like right over here, we have some philodendron ring of fires. I believe these are for $59.99. So literally $60 for this. When you can go to a big box store like Walmart, get it from Grower's Bench for um, $24.99 or even like HEB or just, um, yeah, HEB or just at any big box store. But this one is a uh, Alocasia Jacqueline. Again, uh, Trending Tropicals by Costa Farms released them. So you can actually get them for $19.98. But those are for $54.98. These Alocasia Jacqueline, they look cool. But you know what I will say is these Alocasia Jacqueline um, are looking super healthy. Um, so, I mean, if you want that, I would definitely get it. And then this one right over here is another type of Alocasia. This is for $34.99. Um, I feel like plant nurseries, like maybe even Plant Keeper Incorporated in downtown Dallas or local nurseries might be able to carry these for a little bit more cost-effective prices. But nonetheless, you know, um, for anybody who loves um, beautiful plants, healthy plants, I would still highly recommend shopping at Nicholson Hardy. They've got a friendly staff. They've got some very knowledgeable people in terms of just knowing the plant care and they have healthy plants. I don't have to worry about buying plants from this um, plant um, nursery just because um, they have healthy plants. I don't have to worry about pests coming in. And so even if the prices are slightly more expensive, um, or just a little bit more costly, you know that you're getting a high quality plant and you're not having to worry about bringing um, plants with pests. Like that's the risk about buying plants at big box stores that could potentially happen. And even at um, other nurseries, you know, you just have to really vet it out. But 
you can see that the lighting at Nicholson Hardy is just gorgeous. And they've got a lot of varieties of plants. And I did want to go zoom in right over here and show you this beautiful pink hydrangea. And I just want to pan over here again. They just have some beautiful looking um, indoor azalea. I'm obsessed with these indoor azalea. And then you can see all the Kalanchoe. And then we're going to pan over here. Look at this little station. Um, there is a little bit light here, like the grow lights over here. I really like that a lot. And I don't know what this plant is specifically. Let me see if I can find the plant ID for this. But these are for $19.99. So apparently these um, flowers or flowering plants are similar to like African violet, um, you know, care. Look at this. This one's another one too. And these are supposedly sourced by a local African violet um, hybridizer grower in the, the DFW market. So I do like that they support local. I think you should always support local and look at how beautiful the blooms are on this plant. But they did, you know, the staff did tell me this particular plant grows um, similar to like African violets. Their care tips are like um, the same thing as African violet. Like as far as their leaves, they don't um, necessarily want to get wet. Otherwise, they may rot away just like in African violet. But they've got some beautiful blooms here. Um, look at the leaves too. I love the leaf shape, but look at that bloom right over there. Look at that texture. Um, if you saw this in real life versus just the camera, the um, lighting just illuminates these plants even more so. And speaking of aluminum or illuminating, look at these aluminum plants. These are the Pelia um, plants. I love them. These are for $9.99. They are a little bit more compact, which is cool, but I feel like if I wanted to buy a, um, an aluminum plant, I would buy them at Kroger just because they're in larger six inch pots versus the four inch pot right over here. Nonetheless, if you want a smaller plant and these are actually more full than the Kroger ones, definitely get it at Nicholson Hardy. And this is another plant that I absolutely love. I just am, you know, this is for $8.99. This is the China doll plant and these actually go very large i don't know if their growth habits are pretty fast so please leave in the comments plant foldies or even in the live chat if you've grown a china doll in your your home what did that care tip look like how vigorous of a grower are they but can you believe all of this beautiful natural light like i can see why these flowering plants are doing well like these are this is probably what i want to buy it just really depends these indoor zelia but i love that they have um, you know, azalea trees, like they've got braided azalea trees. These are for $69.99. They're a little bit pricey, but I think if I ever am able to bring that into my space, considering I have so many plants already, um, I would add that. That would just add to my aesthetic because I absolutely love bonsai trees, Japanese maples, and azalea as well. Um, I do have a couple of satsuki azalea growing in my backyard, so I'm super excited they actually survived most of the harsh winter up in North Dallas, even through like a potential freeze. But look at how beautiful these are indoor azalea. Like these azaleas can potentially grow indoors. Would I say they, they would grow in like lower light conditions? No, because it's a flowering plant. So it's going to need a lot of bright indirect light. But nonetheless, that's awesome. And look at how that light just hits these philodendron heteracium brazil hanging baskets that's the thing about nicholson hardy nicholson hardy has some awesome hanging baskets because typically their hanging baskets already have plants that are trailing down and i feel like that's so awesome and i'm sorry guys if i keep like panning over and showing you these indoor azalea and even those flowering plants at the front of the store right over here we have a bunch of aglonema snow Look at how large they are. And then right next to these anthuriums, which happen to have white blooms. So as far as Nicholson Hardy goes, they have a really good sense of like plant styling and how they present their plants. They actually make you want to buy plants because of what the plants look like. And that's the thing about big box stores. Again, I don't want to be super negative because I know that the majority of our plant foldy subscribers found my channel through big box stores, but I really want to um, patronize local plant nurseries, especially in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, I want to get a little bit more awareness about plants because I know that we probably get the majority of plants at a big box store. But if you actually invest the time and do some research and go to these local nurseries, you will see that there are just higher quality plants. 
And we talked about hanging baskets. Look at this. Have you seen such a large Syngonium hanging basket? And mind you guys, it's only for $29.99 and you've got a lush like hanging basket. So I think that's super cool. Um, I would love to add a hanging basket of Syngonium, but like I said, again, it depends on your space. Um, in your home so you don't want to have a bunch of plants all over your house if you don't have the space the lighting condition and just the clutter like just think of a, having a bunch of plants and having it just cluttered everywhere you're not really able to enjoy the foliage the color the size the texture of the leaves when you just have all these plants piled up um, so just definitely consider that. I mean, um, you know, to eat your own, if you want to have a bunch of plants, um, that's cool. But for me, plant styling and space is very important in just how you present it. Just like, you know, Nicholson Hardy is able to present such beautiful plants um, and just the plant styling. Like right over here is an interesting um, plant. I believe this is a Tamathophyllum. I'm not 100% sure, but look at how beautiful the leaves are. And then we have some other plants right over here. Do you see the sunroof? Love that they have a sunroof. I really wish I had a sunroof in my master bedroom. I remember staying at an Airbnb out in Carmel by the sea and they had like a sunroof in the master bedroom and it was amazing. Um, right over here, and I remember looking at these African violets when I first visited Nicholson Hardy after not going here for so long. Look at the variegated um, leaves. I love the fuzzy leaves of an African violet. These are for, I believe, $29.99, which is not bad because it's already a large um, African violet. It's in bloom, but even if it's not in bloom, just the fact that it has such nice like variegation, you can't beat that. And then also the leaf texture of an African violet, it's nice and fuzzy. They're almost like succulent-like. So like if you water it, like actually get the leaves wet, the high potential of um, an African violet rotting is, 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 is for real. So you definitely want to bottom water African violets. Now African violets also like to remain moist. Don't let the plant um, soil actually dry completely before water. You want to always keep it moist. They do prefer higher humidity if you're able to give it and definitely do not um, water or top water or even get the leaves wet at all because it could spell a lot of trouble for the African violet and actually easily die back down until you don't have a plant anymore. So just FYI, I just wanted to make sure that um, all of you plant folies were aware of some of the plant, um, just the plant care of an African violet. I feel like that's super important, so. And I did want to just slow down and show you guys how beautiful that variegation is on that African violet. Um, I'm not sure what cultivar it is, but um, like I said before, I definitely wanted to give you guys some care tips on the African violet. Um, Nicholson Hardy is a place that I will definitely get an African violet from. They have gorgeous African violets. That variegation, especially on the leaves, just the edging of it, that white variegation is absolutely stunning. Um, and then you can also see in the details of the leaves that it has like a metallic um, shimmery shine to it. The leaf texture, once you touch it, actually is um, fairly thick. It reminds me of succulent type um, plants and just the blooms in general are absolutely stunning as well. So um, I just can't get up you know, get over the fact that these African violets are beautiful. Um, I like the pinks, the purples. It would actually be really nice to see variegated flowers like that one on the far left, but the pink ones are really nice. Um, but yeah, look at these leaves. They are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And they have a bunch of them available to buy at Nicholson Hardy. Um, I would honestly go um, out on a limb and say that Nicholson Hardy has the best flowering plants to purchase and that one's only for $14.99. Look at how nice that African violet is. Um, it reminds me of my grandmother. She grew African violets when I was growing up and my aunt did as well. So I might end up getting some for my, my aunt and my grandmother when I visit them just because these African violets deserve a great home and they know how to grow African violets. But that one right over there that I just um, showed you guys was the philodendron lemon lime. And if anybody uh, missed the premiere for the Plant Keeper Incorporated, you will know that the philodendron lemon lime that grew up the pole, it just um, sized up in its leaf size. So please check that out. And then right over here, we have a Peperomia Guinea and that one is for $14.99. We have a bunch of um, juvenile form prints of orange. 
those are really nice as well. So for anybody looking for a Prince of Orange, these are for $24.99. You can actually go to Nicholson Hardy and get you some Prince of Orange. They've got a lot of assorted um, smaller plants. Um, look at this right here. This is a beautiful Mykins right here for $10.99. Absolutely love me some philodendron Mykins. Very easy to care for plant. It has such beautiful velvety leaves. Right over here, we have a Dracaena Warnecki. I'd, um, I would say it's a lemon lime as well. Look at how beautiful the variegation is. And it's actually um, turning. So I don't know if that's some type of um, hurricane or tornado type Dracaena. And this one right over here is a Dracaena Urban Urchin. Or that's what um, Proven Winners was calling it. I really love this one just because I love the tricolor variegation. Or actually there's four different colors. They've got like a pale green, a mint green, a white, and a dark green. And in everybody's favorite Dracaena, the Dracaena Tornado slash Hurricane. Look at those um, leaves spinning around like a hurricane, guys. Um, these are beautiful Dracaenas. And again, I always say that Dracaenas are very much underrated plants. I feel like they're not in so many like houseplant collections. So please, if you don't have a Dracaena, add one. If you're watching my channel, add yourself a Dracaena. They're very easy. This one is a Dracaena um, Janet Compacta, for instance. Absolutely stunning. And with all of these Dracaenas, they do um, get very large in size just over time. They are moderate growers. They're not quickly um, fast growers, but um, you will get a very large size plant once you just let it grow um, in your, um, your care. Now we have some more Sansevieria right over here. Actually, this is one of my favorite Sansevierias. Don't know the plant ID, but it's really beautiful. And then we have this um, variegated um, plant here for $7.99, this variegated philodendron. Uh, I think it's a Gigantium. Look at how gorgeous it is. And then just look at the lighting of Nicholson Hardy. Look at how beautiful the leaves of these ficus umbellata are underneath um, that skylight. Um, I love it. The sunroof is amazing. And then for my Hoya lovers, look at here. We've got a Hoya Compacta um, right over here. That is really, really nice. That Hindu rope um, Hoya is beautiful. And then we have some more Sansevieria here. And then guys, we have some of my favorite um, plants right here. These are the Syngoniums. This one is um, an assorted type of Syngonium. They have a lot of assorted Syngoniums here. Unfortunately, they don't have the plant IDs for these specific ones. But nonetheless, Syngoniums are super easy to take care of. They do require a little bit more bright and direct light. They can tolerate lower light conditions. They just get a little bit leggy. Um, they're very easy in their care. Um, water, when it's completely dry or when it's about 20% um, dry, um, wet, and you should be good. Sorry, 20% wet. You don't want to overwater um, Syngoniums, but they do like water as well. This uh, is a Syngonium uh, Wellandii, and this one's for $19.99. So that's more of an uncommon Syngonium. Love the Beverly leaves. That's probably one of the more finicky Syngoniums, though, because um, it does require a little bit more um, humidity than the typical Syngonium. But I like to show you guys from um, bottom view. Look at how beautiful these these plants are they are illuminated by this um, sunroof and i just love nicholson hardy i can't tell you so um, how much i love nicholson hardy it is another gorgeous um, plant nursery in the dallas fort worth area if you're visiting dallas or you live in dallas and haven't been to nicholson hardy off of lover's lane definitely visit this place they have two locations this one has more of the indoor plants as well as like the plant decor and also just home styling and then they also have another um, Nicholson Hardy just up the road on Lover's Lane where it's mostly outdoor landscaping plants. But I did want to show you this right here. It's being labeled as a Epipernum Arium um, Pearls and Jade, but I don't think this is a Pearls and Jade. This is more of an Epipernum Arium Enjoy, which is one of my favorite um, pothos. Honestly, I would say um, pothos are probably in my top three or top four types of plants to grow in my collection. I have dethroned the Syngonium as my number one. I think Aglonemas are my number one. Then Syngoniums, then maybe um, Epipremnum Arium. They're just gorgeous. And I know you guys are probably gonna get tired of me looking at these African violets, but um, Nicholson Hardy probably has the best African violets in the DFW Metroplex. I'll go out and say that. I mean, there's other nurseries that carry them, but their African violets are amazing. And guys, look at this Hedra Helix. This is a beautiful Hedra Helix trailing plant. This one is actually the Hedra Helix ba um, Gold Baby. 
Um, Ivy, look at how beautiful it is, and it is living its best life. I'm surprised that spider mites haven't infested it, but as you can see, if you can grow a Hedra Helix and let it thrive, it is a beautiful plant, and it's beautiful trailing down. Um, we have a bunch of Epipremnum Arium right here, or Pothos plants. This one is the Golden Pothos for $9.99. That's a really nice looking one in a four and a half inch planter. Um, we have a bunch of Philodendra Heteracea. We have a Philodendra Heteracea in Brazil, a Philodendra Heteracea um, Lemon Lime. This one is for $12.99. I'm looking for a large um, hanging basket of these um, Lemon Lime um, Heteracea. That is such a beautiful plant. I actually prefer that more so than the Neon Pothos if I had to choose between the two just because of the heart-shaped leaves. And then we have some Calathea Makoyana right over here. Beautiful plant. This one's for $14.99 um, for a smaller version of the Calathea Makoyana. But nonetheless, it's a beautiful Calathea a classic Calathea, one that a lot of people already know about. And then we have some red Maranthas right here. These are for $12.99. And so Maranthas, Calatheas, uh, Nanthi plants, and Stromanthi are all very similar in care. Um, they can be a little bit finicky. They do require a little bit more higher humidity. Their water quality, you don't want to water them with like tap water. I would say bottled water would be perfect for them. And look at this right here. This is a cool... Um, some type of like Aurelia plant. We have a Dracaena right there. And we have more plants around the corner. I did want to pan over here. Look at all of these Hedra Helix guys. Look at this Hedra Helix forest. Um, they don't have all of the plant IDs for these Hedra Helix, but look at this one right here. They've got the cream variegation. They've got Hedra Helix or English Ivy trailing. Um, I haven't seen any spider mites. This is really bold for Nicholson Hardy to have all of these Hedra Helix growing indoors, but they must have some really good um, pest control for that. And then this is really interesting, the zebra plant. Look what happens when you um, cut it back down. It starts to grow some new leaves so that's really cool and we just passed by a calathea lancifolia and we have some more assorted um syngoniums right here i love this syngonium this syngonium actually looks like a um plum um plum illusion syngonium not 100 percent sure this one looks like a syngonium white butterfly we'll just call it that and then we just have some more hanging baskets a monstera celtipici a celtipiciana Celtipicana, I think that's how you pronounce it, guys. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. These are really cool trailing as well. At first, I thought they were Epipranum panatum Cebu blue pothos, but these are um, Celtipicana. So those are really cool monsteras. This one right over here is a Kokidama um, staghorn fern. Um, and then my camera just started to act up, but my staghorn fern um, Kokidama. And then what else do we have right over here? We're going to take a look. We have some type of begonia or rex begonia right over here in a kokedama pretty cool right here these are all for 34.99 so if you want a kokedama you can get it at nicholson hardy it's just a little moss bowl um moss ball right over here wrapped around the roots the way you would take care of a kokedama is you just submer submerge the whole moss bowl in the water and then just let it um drip and then you can hang it or just put it on a shelf and you're good to go there, here we have a bunch of Monstera. We have some Monstera Deliciosa. We have some um, juvenile forms and then more mature forms right over there. And then you can see right here is a Florida, uh, Philodendra Florida Green. And we have more plants right over here. There's just so many plants to look at at Nicholson Hardy. While it's not as large in its like square footage as Plant Keeper, Nicholson Hardy does have some beautiful um, plant styling. So I did want to go ahead and recommend um, Nicholson Hardy for any plant enthusiasts, plant lovers, plant foldy that wants to see plants in the local DFW market. This one right here is a Dracaena Hawaii. And, um, and that's a really nice one as well. And then we have some Dracaena um, Jewel, wh um, White Jewel. That's really nice for $19.99. You actually get two Dracaenas in the pot. Love the um, very stark variegation of it. Those Dracaenas are absolutely stunning and they do um, size up in size. We have um, a Hoya Chelsea here and another Chelsea, I mean, uh, another Hoya on the right. Not sure what it is. And then we have a um, plethora of just indoor azalea right over here i can't get over the indoor azalea i will probably look at that in just a bit again and this is actually really really cool and this is what's going to get me in trouble is because i am a sucker for 
beautiful begonia um begonia are a little bit harder for me to grow personally but look at how beautiful these rex begonia are these ones are for $14.99 look at how the light um actually gives it a different type of interest see the thing is about um, rex begonia is they have a silvery shine to their leaves um, a metallic look to their leaves they come in different color shapes veinations and even this one is happy it's actually blooming so it's just amazing how um rex begonia have been hybridized there's hundreds of different types of rex begonia so what i learned is um there's not really a lot of like cultivar names on these begonias or they're very difficult to find as far as like specific cultivar names just because there's so many hybrid um you know hybrids of them like look at this one this is a beautiful red one i love uh, maroon crimson colors and the shimmer on it is absolutely stunning there's not any leaf shine or anything that is the natural foliage of it and a lot of these begonias actually remind me of begonias of a local plant nursery a famous one actually in lewisville texas called steve's leaves steve's leaves um, hybridizes so many begonias i wouldn't be surprised if some of these begonias were sourced out by steve leaves don't um, comment me you know quote me on that but look at that i love this look at how beautiful this one is i believe this one you would actually see at a big box store but just in smaller form but look at how beautiful that bloom is i have never really seen blooms on a rex begonia so you can tell that these begonias are a little bit older more mature and definitely happy um and look at this one right here look at how cute this one is i love dark foliage leaf um plants like zz ravens philodendron um black cardinal and now we have some gray metallic dark ash charcoal looking um rex begonias look at how beautiful that is i'm definitely gonna pick up some begonia i know that i'm not really supposed to be buying plants guys this is just really gonna mess me up but i cannot resist getting these begonias i'm thinking of getting some of the darker leaf foliage um rex begonias and look at that um um, one right over here this one is going home with me it's the only one they have but look at that underneath the um the leaves look at how um the sunshine just like actually changes it it literally gives it like a prism power sailor moon type like crystal i don't know i'm just rambling but this is just so beautiful look at that i i can't get over it guys this is so cool plant foldies let me know what you think in the comments the live premieres do you guys grow like rex begonia what does that care look like for you i would love to know because i've killed so many of them just like hydra helix but look they always attract me they always end up like getting me to buy them and this one is going to go home with me as well look at how beautiful this begonia is so beautiful and it's really interesting that when you give it some light there are these like um like green undertones and there's not really a speck of green so lots of um color going um on with these rex begonias and it's one that i definitely want to add to my collection it's it's just really stunning like there's there's no way of, around it and i don't know why um i don't have any begonia in my collection actually i do know like look at this yellow one right here this is really pr um, pretty i do know it's just that i end up even over watering begonia and the thing about begonia is if you get the leaves at least for these rex begonia um wet um that really would like the stem part or just even just the leaves will start to rot right away so they want to be on the drier side but they do require some humidity so there's just a lot more care tips to it I will show you this right here. This is a really nice looking um, Alacasia Silver Dragon. We've seen that a lot in big box stores. And look at how beautiful these watermelon pepperoni, pepperomia right over here. These are for $39.99. But look at how beautiful they are. They look like miniature watermelons. Look at the veination of the the leaves and the other one over there is actually blooming so watermelon peperomia i've had those in the past i actually don't have peperomia in my collection just because for me some of the watering is a little bit tricky for me we have some philodendron brazil on a totem um and then we have some ficus lorata right over here we are going to walk over here again and look at this this is my favorite nanthi that i've seen in big box stores this is the nanthi gray star um proven winners usually sells these at um, home depots but now we see them at nicholson hardy these ones are large form ones um they like low light keep moist so that's the care tips lower light conditions it can tolerate and keep moist beautiful looking nanthi plant love the silvery um color of the leaves and just the veins of the um the variegation and then we have this right here this is some type of euphorbia 
And as you can see, as I pan out, look at how beautiful this plant nursery is. I just had to stop and, and just enjoy the view. And then we have another Aglonema Lady Madonna. We have a large China doll. Look at how large that China doll is. And we have a bird of paradise right over here. Another majesty palm. Like I said, majesty palms are everywhere. They, you will find them everywhere. And then we have a bunch of Philanopsis orchids right over here. Different colors um, and sizes. And then these are really cool. These are some more ficus bonsai. Look at the trunks of those. Those are insane. And we have a random philodendron Brazil over there. But look at all of these Philanopsis orchids. Um, so grocery stores carries them and then just ate, I mean, Philanopsis orchids are kind of like majesty palms. You will find them everywhere. And it's just really interesting that there are so many orchids available. Um, I thought that orchids actually take a while to grow. So like, I'm not how, uh, sure how they propagate, how they multiply, but there's so many Philanopsis orchids. So somebody in the comments, plant foldies, let me know what you think about orchids, how they are propagated. Cause they do, they definitely mass produce them. And then right over here, we have some hanging baskets of string of pearls. Those are super cute. And we have guys, look at this small forms of Hoya Compacta Variegata for $17.99. Look at how cute those are. I know that we had some hanging baskets at um, Plant Keeper Incorporated in my previous plant nursery tour video, but we do have some Hoya Compacta Variegata at Nicholson Hardy. So if you want one of those, they actually have a lot of assorted Hoyas. I'm just not as like versed in the plant IDs for Hoyas, um, but this is really cool. We've got Jade, but I wanted to show you this. Look at this. This is a variegated uh, string of pearls. This is only for $9.99. That is really cool. If I'm going to get any type of string of some things, it would be a variegated string of pearls. They remind me, obviously, of pearls. And me coming from the Philippines, we have a bunch of pearls. And then, you know, the Philippines is known as the Pearl of the Orient. So, like, there's just a lot of, like, cultural um, connection to me with that plant. Um, and then we have some more jade plants here. These are the variegated ones. I actually want to add a jade plant to my collection just because they remind me of my childhood. And this specific one actually is what I would want to pick up. That is for $9.97. Really nice looking plant. And then we have some Raphidophora um, Discorvia right here. Look at how beautiful these ones are. These are for $14.99. So these plants will not actually um, show its true beauty and full potential until you put it on some type of pole plank because it wants to climb up. It wants to climb up and size up in its leaves and fenestry. So if you have a Discorvia, um, you definitely have to put it on a pole or something for it to climb on. Um, we're going to pass by this beautiful Euphorbia and then we're just going to look at the beauty and elegance of these indoor azalea. Love azalea. They remind me of like Japanese um, gardens and that is a huge, I'm a huge fan of it. And look at how beautiful those braided um, azalea are. I did not know that they had indoor azaleas that actually can grow indoors. I mean, everybody, any plant can really grow indoors. It's just a matter of the conditions, especially the lighting conditions. But apparently these ones have been hybridized to where it can tolerate some lower light conditions. I would tell you any flowering plant needs to have bright indirect light. So these would need to either be under a grow light or right in front of a window seal. Um, but yes, these are beautiful azalea. We've got some that are already starting to bloom. Um, this one has some variegated ones right over here. Just really stunning looking um, azalea. I know for a fact someday, not today, I will buy a variegated or not even a variegated, yeah, well, a variegated bloom azalea indoors, but definitely from Nicholson Hardy. Um, really nice looking plants. And then we have some right over here, some more daffodils and some more um, indoor azalea right over here. I need to get the scientific Latin name for it, but these daffodils are for $9.99. We have some more indoor azaleas right over here. These ones are in six inch planters for $34.99. I think I want to get the, um, the tree form, the ones that they've trained in tree form for sure. And then we have some Kalanchoe. Um, I've grown to like Kalanchoe just because, um, I don't know, I've seen them. I pretty much see a Kalanchoe almost every day. And that's the shocking part, guys. Like as I do these plant videos, like look at this Monster Adansonii. I, I literally have seen plants every day. I have been in a big box or some plant store or some plant nursery every day um, filming just because I am attempting to try and get you guys daily content. I know everybody enjoys um, having our plant parties 
you know, shout out to my viewer, Plant Foley Luke, for being the number one cheerleader of, you know, in, you know, inviting people to smash the like button. It really helps that. And actually, for those watching this video, if you haven't already, please make sure you guys um, hit the subscribe button and the like button. When you guys hit the like button, it pushes my videos out to even more plant enthusiasts. And we want to definitely grow the plant community. I think the more the merrier. So definitely please hit this, the like button, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff. Um, yesterday, we were able to get 8,000 subscribers. And today, we have um, even more subscribers joining our plant community. So just a little commercial on that and just a little shameless plug. But I did want to just pan over and show you guys all of the beautiful plants at Nicholson Hardy. We went and passed by some maidenhead fern earlier, some really nice looking um, indoor azalea tree forms and then we have these beautiful um hanging baskets i would tell you nicholson hardy definitely has the best trailing hanging baskets they um definitely have some good looking plants and i wanted to show you some more indoor azalea right over here i'm surprised that um, not a lot of grocery stores carry indoor azaleas year round the only times you will see um indoor azaleas apparently at grocery stores is during valentine's well it is going to be the month of february so we will see if they will carry that look at this one this one has like a salmon type looking color really elegant looking and then we have some um delicate you know, pink ones right here, some Philanopsis orchids. Um, and then we just have the red or um, not the red, the um, dark pink azalea blooms right here. Very nice looking azaleas. And then as you can see right over here, we have some more trailing plants um, above us. And look, this is a Philodendron heteraceum lemon lime. I would most likely buy this if I haven't already added so many plants in my collection. But now I know where I can get a philodendron um, lemon lime hanging basket because that's one that I want to get. I'm really holding off to see if I can find one at um, a big box store because these ones are for um, $29.99, those hanging baskets. It's not bad, but I feel like I can get one from like Walmart, from Costa Farms. I'm holding off on Costa Farms and just sending some hanging baskets of philodendron, heteraceum, lemon lime. This is actually a nice looking um, Schifflera right here, variegated Schifflera for $19.99. I like that variegation. Look at that really cool um, bromeliad right over here. We have a sea of bromeliad. So alongside Majesty Palms and Philonepsis um, orchids, you will always see bromeliads. Like I wanna know what the propagation process or how they multiply so many um, bromeliads, but you will see so many of them. I don't know. I don't understand um, how they have so many of them sourced out. And do people really grow bromeliads in their homes? Now, if I was going to pick my favorite bromeliad that I've seen today, it would definitely be that one right over here. It reminds me of like a Dracaena white aspen. This the variegation. So it's like a Dracaena white aspen with a bloom, essentially. Look at how beautiful that is. I love um, how beautiful the variegation is. It's just really nice. They remind me of ribbons, actually. Um, so I just think that's really cool. And then we have some more Philanopsis orchids here. We've actually got a lot of white Philanopsis orchids. So I don't know if white um, orchids are a thing or if that's like a favorite color or do people really buy just a lot of white orchids. Um, plant foldies in the view, you know, in the comments, leave, leave a comment about that. Let me know what you think. And right over here, we have some hanging baskets, assorted hanging baskets. We have philodendron micans. We've got some um, skindapsis hanging baskets. Um, we've got some global green pothos, Cebu blue pothos. Lots of trailing um, hang, hanging baskets. So plant foldies, hopefully you're enjoying this plant content today. Um, and you know I can't do a video without a aglonema red siam. This one's for $24.99, super lush, super healthy looking aglonema. I would highly recommend um, adding that first to your collection if you're gonna go into the aglonema route. And again, if you are a plant foldy, please consider getting you some aglonemas. We need more on the market, but in order to get more on the market, we need to have a higher demand for those plants. So um, clearly there's a high demand for like bromeliads, um, philanopsis orchids, and majesty palms. Like, look at this. There is an entire wall of philanopsis orchids and these philanopsis orchids are amazing. Look at these white ones. That's just, this is just awesome. And um, we have some air succulents apparently. Air succulents, never really heard of air succulents. Um, but basically they are just out in the air. They don't need to be in like any type of growing medium. Um, that's really cool. All you need is no watering, no misting, just enjoy. So 
that's a, a super easy care plant. I'm sure that it does need bright indirect light or a lot of light. So it is a succulent. Don't forget that. And then we're just going to walk over here. So Nicholson Hardy kind of gives you that jungle vibe as well, but not um, to the extent of like plant keeper. But if you are looking for flowering plants that can grow indoors, hanging baskets that are trailing, um, I would definitely go to Nicholson Hardy. I would say they have some of the best hanging baskets, like even this right here for the, um, look at that. They, they have some type of string of something, but that is such a beautiful looking hanging basket. Um, but Nicholson Hardy definitely has that. And if you just want an ambiance where it's peaceful, it's stylish, it's bougie, if you want to call it that, um, go to Nicholson Hardy. Um, I would recommend going in the afternoon when the light is really intense or going first thing in the morning. Like, look at this. This is so beautiful. Just this whole setup of Aglonema snow. Look at how beautiful that is. I'm actually tempted to get an Aglonema snow. I already have like two in my collection, but that one is highly variegated. And then right over here, we have some type of Alocasia. I don't know the actual Alocasia ID, so please leave, the, leave it in the comments. But these are for $29.99 beautiful large form um alocasia so far that's actually a good size for that price so definitely do that and then i did want to feature this these look like maple leaves or um i don't know sweet gum tree leaves these are variegated fatchadera or sometimes called the pia tree you can see these as exotic angels by costa farms and big box stores but look at how they size up and get large that's one of my favorite plants i would actually add that to my collection and i would like to try to grow it as like a tree I'm not 100% sure if they do have the same type of uh, potential pest or susceptibility to spider mites. And then right over here, we have some lemon lime philodendron on a trellis. So um, lots to look at, guys. Um, hopefully you guys are loving the, these plant videos of mine. You know, I am always trying to get one daily. And then I just saw this variegated African violet. Eventually, when I catch up, maybe I need to take like a few days from work off just to go film a bunch and edit a bunch and really schedule these um, videos out. Um, I started out with videos that were like 15 minutes long, then they got to 30 and now they're about hour long videos. Um, plan foldies, let me know if you like these low, longer um, content videos or would you just like a short 15 minute video. I feel like having longer videos just really gives you guys a big, an, an ambiance as if you are shopping with me and that is my goal is if you guys are shopping with me. Um, I am going to remain faceless for now. It depends on when we get like 40,000 subscribers, maybe I will reveal my face in a video. I'm just shy, guys. Um, my friends know that I'm not actually shy, just I'm shy on YouTube. But definitely, you know, continue to follow my plant journey. You can see that we have all of these flowering azalea. Can you guys tell which plants I actually like? I just tend to like pan over and show you guys, um, you know, certain plants over and over. I did get some feedback that I should show some more euphorbia, cacti, and other plants besides just aeroids and flowering plants. But I mean, I can't help it. I, I kind of am gravit, you know, I kind of gravitate to these plants that are what I like, but I really am tempted to get that philodendron lemon lime in the hanging basket. I've been looking for it and it's actually a very good size um, philodendron. And then just these azaleas. These azaleas are calling my name. They're trying to get me to pick one up and buy it. So plant foldy, should I go ahead and buy it? Or should I try to have some kind of restraint and not buy it? I'm already breaking my no buy and getting those um, Rex begonia, like I, I was, um, I was sold. They were enticing me because of all the shimmer and shining, you know, shining going on with their leaves. And yeah, that's what happens. I don't know if you guys are also in the same similar boat where when you go plant shopping, you're like, I'm just going to go window shopping look at plants. And then all of a sudden you're grabbing plants, you're grabbing plants that you don't have all of the um, space for, but guys, I am going to end this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our little plant party um, in shopping with me and Nicholson Hardy off of Lover's Lane. Highly recommend Nicholson Hardy. Please um, support local um, businesses. I know that my um, channel is uh, I'm primarily focused on big box store plant shopping, but especially for the plant foldies that are out in the Dallas Fort Worth area. As I show more local um, nurseries, I ask that you guys check it out and I will see you on the next one. Bye.